I'm Tony Negri, Director of Product Management, Phillips 66 Lubricants. Thank you for joining us in our continuing series of engine teardowns on Gardol FE 10W30 FA4 diesel engine oil. We've previously torn down uh, two Detroit diesels, we've done a Volvo, we've done Packar, uh, and now we've got a Cummins ISX 15 liter. Uh, it's come out of a 2017 Kenworth T680. Uh, this vehicle was running 30,000 mile oil drain intervals and it was hauling dairy products, uh, bulk, bulk dairy, uh, from the farms to processing plants around the region. Uh, also doing long distance runs between uh, Idaho, uh, where the vehicle is stationed, and Wisconsin. Uh, so a pretty heavy duty service on this vehicle. So uh, Teddy Lazarus is here with us today and he's gonna help walk us through some of what we've seen on this engine teardown. Teddy? I think that the parts are what really tell the story. Um, I'm going to start with focusing on the top end. I think the top end, you're dealing with a different oil regime, lubrication regime than you are on the bottom end. And I think it's much more demanding on the top end parts. As you look at the camshaft, you can see that the camshaft is pristine. Um, we have trace to light wear on the lobes, um, but overall looks really, really good. So Teddy, we've seen some other examples of camshafts out of similar Cummins power plants here in the garage while we've been here this week. Uh, tell us what we've seen uh, on those others. At about a half million miles, 500,000 miles, they're seeing a lot of pitting, a lot of wear on the lobes. Um, it's, just, it's just one of the characteristics of this engine. Um, this one, again, has run three quarters of a million miles, 700,000, and uh, it looks pristine. We, we don't yeah. see any of the pitting. Um, light to trace wear. See, it's, it is very clean. Correct. All right, take us through the next set of parts. So I think we're gonna focus on rocker arms next. Um, as you can tell, uh, just like the cam lobes, the roller surfaces are in really good shape. Um, again, trace to light wear, um, but nothing that can be felt. Uh, as far as the uh, bearing itself, light wear in the contact zone, Rollers are in excellent condition. Buttons are, again, you can still see a lot of the original machine marks in that. So like I said, from the top end, this is probably what impressed me the most because you're dealing a lot more with boundary lubrication uh, and more of a mixed oil regime on that top end, much more demanding. We're on the bottom end of the engine. You tend to see more of a full film lubrication and uh, hydrodynamic oil film. So again, as we move into that bottom end, uh, the bearings for 700,000 miles, these look really, really good. Um, you don't see a lot of debris tracking through the bearings, um, very minimal wear, still a lot of the aluminum or, and lead left on the top there. It's, uh, like I said, they, they, they could have ran these Another, run them another 700,000, 700, yeah, exactly. Um, as we work our way into the rod bearings themselves, I'm actually holding the lower bearings here, but you can tell that very minimal wear on these. Um, on the top side, of course, this is where all of your load is at. So you can see these pretty much like the main bearings. Um, minimal wear, very little debris tracking. Um, which is phenomenal for you know oil drains at 30,000 miles. They look really, really good. Again, these, these could have ran a lot longer. Move into the pistons. Yeah. Uh, these again were very impressive to me. Um, I'm just gonna start off with rings. Um, for 700,000 miles, there is very little wear on the ring surfaces, on the faces. Um, very light trace carbon buildup, um, no wear steps to be felt. Top ring, we were looking at about 80% contact across the face. Uh, the center ring, more of the scraper ring, we were seeing about 20% contact across the face. And we were getting full contact across the front face of the uh, oil control ring on the landings. Um, again, trace minimum wear. Uh, in pristine condition. Moving on to the piston liners. Um, again, very typical of what we've seen through this teardown process. Um, 
crosshatch is still visible. Uh, minimal to little polishing at the turnaround points, top and bottom. Overall, minimal work. As we move into the piston, um, again, 700,000 miles. You can tell here at the top landing, we do have some, some heavy carbon buildup, uh, but we rated it around 50%, so only 50% uh, major carbon. Second landing had you know some medium carbon buildup at about 20%, so very little carbon buildup on the second landing. And of course, the third landing was virtually clean. Um, again, tops of the pistons, uh, really good, in great condition. We go to the bottom side of the piston, down here in the cooling uh, oil galleys, you don't see any carbon buildup here, um, which is really good. And of course, the cooling on the bottom side of the piston, there's a little bit of discoloration, possibly a little varnish there, but no carbon on the bottom side. So again, Tony, in really good shape. Um, connecting rods, wrist pins, I mean, again, pristine. You notice on the inside of the connecting rods on these Cummins engines, it's very unique. Their oil grooves help hold that lubrication in place. But again, very minimal wear, very good definition around all the oil grooves. I mean, it, it, it looks really, really good. Yeah, they look, they look brand new. Tell us about uh, the last item we brought out here for our the show last and tell. Item we have here kind of closest to us. Sorry, I kind of jumped over the top of this. So this here would be your rocker shaft. This is the shaft that our rocker arms ride on. Um, looking at the shaft again, we had trace to light wear um, just at the very front here, which would be on number one, just a little bit of a step there. You can barely feel it with your fingernail. Uh, the rest of it is rather smooth. Again, you can see the wear in the load zones, but overall, that shaft is in near perfect shape. I mean, again, there's, there's hardly a step on that front at all. In these critical points, there is little to minimum wear. Thank you, Teddy, that's great. With FA4, you can expect about 1.5% fuel economy advantage when switching from CK4-1540 to the FA4-10W30. The thing that gives most people pause to reflect is, what would I give up to get that fuel economy? And the answer is nothing. So the wear protection is equivalent to what you see with our Gardol ECT. Uh, it's the same core additive package for our formulations and then enhanced for FA4 to get the right uh, viscosity uh, for the lower HTHS. Uh, but the performance really speaks for itself. So there's no sacrifice in wear protection in order to achieve the fuel economy gains. And that's the proposition that we offer to you, to our customers, uh, to know with full confidence that with Gardol FE, you sacrifice nothing. We've got an FA4 specific warranty, so even if you're working with a uh, engine manufacturer who may not support fully the use of FA4 in their engines, we do. We will support that, we back that with the power of our wallet so that you've got total protection. If our lubrication causes a problem in the engine, we will pay to repair that engine. It's that simple. Absolutely. No questions asked. We have the best warranty in the business. For more information, feel free to browse the rest of our YouTube channel. You'll see the rest of the engine teardown videos on Gardol FE 10W30. Uh, you see more pristine examples like this one we've showed you today.